Hey, it's Mr. Russell. We're here to do our very first pre-lab. I wondered if you guys will join me in a little science experiment. It involves Gatorade and some water. What we'll do is I will take a little bit of Gatorade and pour it here just to get just a little bit. Notice the orange color and the consistency of the color. Also notice that this color comes from this dye down here comes from yellow six. It's funny. That's a uh, it's an orange color, but the dye is called yellow six. So now, what do you think will happen when I pour some water into here? Now, what you might expect is we get some dilution. You could see, obviously see it getting diluted. Let's pour some more. As we pour more in there, you can actually see that there's lip. And as I poured more in there, uh, you can see that the color actually got um, less concentrated. Um, and you could actually see that there was, that it is a less concentrated sample now. So, what this turns out is, um, is there is, uh, this is an actual, actually a linear relationship between the light that's absorbed by the sample and the concentration. This is known as the Beer-Lambert Law. Oh yeah, that's diluted big time. So you could use um, orange Gatorade, or I'm running out of yellow Gatorade, but you could use yellow, you could use blue, whatever you would like. Um, and but it's important to uh, we're gonna try to get a baseline color um, or one of the primary colors, and those are the ones we'll be working with in our lab. That'll be important. I'll show you why in just a second. The idea for this was developed by a guy named Pierre Bouget in 1729. A scientist named Johann Heinrich Lambert came along and he actually proposed what we call the Lambert Law, which is pictured right here. He proposed that the absorbance of light was directly proportional to the path length of light. After this, um, a scientist named August Beer in 1852 found out that the absorbance of light was actually was also dependent on the concentration, like I showed you with this Gatorade. So, what they did is they combined the two of those laws together, and we call them the Beer-Lambert law. The Beer-Lambert law is written as capital A equals little a times little b times little c. Capital A stands for absorbance of light. Little a stands for molar absor absorptivity. B stands for the path length. And C stands for the concentration in molarity. There are a couple chemical and instrumental uh, limitations to this. You must have a homogeneous sample. The turbidity of the sample, which is the cloudiness of the sample, has an effect. Like we wouldn't want to use orange juice because it has uh, some pulp in it, and that could um, contribute to a significant source of error. And also, you must have a monochromatic sample. So we wouldn't want Dr. Pepper because or any kind of dark soda because those are black or very brown which are are very uh, which in are a mixture of colors we want something that is monochromatic that's why the yellow or the red or the blue Gatorade will be used in this experiment to measure the absorbance of our samples we'll have to use either a spectrophotometer or a colorimeter 
This is a picture of a spectrophotometer that is kind of decades, uh, several decades old. Um, I used one of these models when I, uh, in my college chemistry classes, where the sample would go here in what we call a cuvette in a uh, little glass, uh, looks like a test tube, and we could adjust the um, transmittance and the absorbance uh, through these little knobs right here. Um, but we will use a more updated model that will actually uh, adjust it for us, which is great. And this is a picture of a color colorimeter, a colorimeter, where we will um, insert our sample into uh, our plastic cuvettes that are that are one centimeter in length, and they will uh, the light source will shine through the sample and hit a detector and based on how much light is absorbed um, or transmitted through the uh, sample will uh, will send it down um, through here and in, into your lab quest or the, la the laptop so that it can interpolate the data this method is really known as light spectroscopy and we'll be using it in several different labs that's why I'm going into it a lot in detail right now um, and it is testable on the AP test uh, for using either spectrophotometers or colorimeters. You just really need to know the theory and how they work to, on the AP test. One important thing is if you were asked to choose a wavelength given data here, uh, choose the wavelength that shows the highest absorbance value. Well, I'll get it and that's called the lambda max like I covered before uh, Beer's law is here and a equals ABC or it could be a equals epsilon BC the the symbol a stands for absorbance uh, which is what is measured the symbol a is a factor and it is unique to each sample so a red I'm sorry, an orange Gatorade will have a different molar absorbity, molar absorptivity than a yellow Gatorade or a red one or a blue one. They'll all have their own unique molar absorptivities. It's how much light will be absorbed by one centimeter of a one molar solution. This will be a constant value and will not change uh, for each sample. The symbol B is the path length of the cuvette since we'll always be using uh, cuvettes that are one centimeter in length. This will always be one centimeter um, I, and almost and I can't imagine a situation on the AP test where they would not uh, where it wouldn't be one centimeter because I've always always seen them as one centimeter. Um, and the symbol C is concentration measured in simply molarity. Take a se second and think what is the opposite of red? It's green. What's the opposite of orange? It's blue. So I'm not coming up with these. These are for real. They are actually on the color wheel that's in your pre-lab. Um, uh, that's in your background. Uh, you notice that blue is on the bottom here and and it, I'm sorry it's backwards and um, orange is on the top so you will look at the opposite color that you're looking at right here now um, to find and remember that when we look at all of our different colors we're actually looking at different wavelengths uh, the wavelengths of the light are the actual colors so down at the bottom I've got the electromagnetic spectrum on the x-axis from violet all the way to red and on the y-axis we have the absorbance. Um, you'll first plot one of these graphs at the very beginning just to find the peak um, wavelength. You're looking for uh, the one that is absorbing the most light. In the orange Gatorade it is absorbing all of the blue light because it is the opposite of blue, right? it is absorbing all blue light and it is transmitting 
orange light. So we have absorbance and transmittance. Those are two key words. Uh, it is absorbing blue light, but transmitting orange light. Now we'll, uh, we, need, we need to assign these certain wavelengths. So we're assigning the lambda max um, or the maximum wavelength. To find the lambda max, you'll simply just find the peak. For red, you'll just look at the peak here and see that it is on where green is on the electromagnetic spectrum. It's that w wavelength, so that makes sense. If I look at the uh, yellow, its peak is actually where um, the, the blue is or the orange is. Um, and if I look at the green, it's close to actually where the orange is. Uh, so that's that's a little interesting, um, but you don't need to use this because your spectrophotometers will do it for you. Um, but you'll also uh, you can use this for reference to get valid data. When you plot this graph, your peak, your lambda max, needs to have an absorbance between 0.7 and 1. So these are all a little low. They're probably a little too diluted. So uh, your stock solution should have something between 0.7 and 1. If you look at the first question in your pre-lab, this little graph right here, you can see that uh, it has um, its peak about a little higher than 0.8. So that would be valid data. So to explain the, the diagram in your uh, background, we have our normal cuvette. It has a path length B. And we have the power um, of the light, uh, the incoming light here as P0, and the power of the outgoing light as P. Notice that the power in is greater than the power coming out. When we plot this data, we find this relationship that P over P naught times 100% is going to be our percent transmittance. Likewise, T times 100 is our percent transmittance. So T, uh, the transmittance times 100% is our percent transmittance. That makes sense. But um, so we find that the power going in divided by the uh, I'm sorry the power going out divided by the power going in is our transmittance. If we will uh, take a completely pure sample, a completely clear sample like distilled water, the power going in and the power going out should be uh, equal to each other. So when we look at this, this uh, will be the same value so that will give us 1. 1 times 100% should be 100% transmittance. The last um, mathematical relationship is A for the absorbance is equal to negative log of T. Not percent T, just T. Uh, absorbance equals negative log of T. Once we have determined our lambda max, we're ready to actually measure our samples. We'll need to plot several different uh, standard concentrations using stock samples, which I'll provide for you. And then uh, that will give us some kind of linear plot. It should be a very linear um, and very straight line. Um, and then once you have your four standards and you have your known amount you can now um, insert your unknown sample um, which will be your Gatorade and you will find an absorbance value wherever it, it lines up on that uh, plot or on that line will be your concentration so it's a very uh, handy tool uh, being able to be strong on this lab will help us a lot in the future, so this will be great. I'm looking forward to it.